Hey, friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about when to upgrade your art business. What does it mean to be a professional artist in 2023? You are a painter, and you can replace this with anything you literally make, like you are an illustrator or you are a sculptor, but you're also a photographer, a videographer, a photo editor, a video editor, a Canva expert, a king of the mock-ups, a website designer, a website admin, the finance committee, you're a secretary, you're a customer service representative, you're a business card designer, you are transportation services, you are a cleaning expert, you are a representation of your brand, you're a social media expert, and so many other jobs. You're, You're all of those things. And When you're a beginner and an intermediate artist, you're basically forced to be all of those things yourself. It costs money to outsource these things and you have to be protective of your small business. You get pretty good at being a website designer. You might be okay at taking product photography, decent at cleaning, and very good at being tired. (laughs) I wanna talk to you today about things I wish I had upgraded or outsourced in my creative career earlier than I did. These are things that once I was able or even knew to outsource, skyrocketed my sales and made my art business so much easier to manage. Some of these things I paid a lot of money for. Some of these things I paid a small yearly subscription to and other of these were free. One thing I learned from my studies last year is the 80-20 rule. That 20% of what you do makes 80% of the impact on your business. That could be by automating, deleting, or delegating other tasks so that you can focus on what's really impactful. Having that in mind, these are some of the game-changing effects that I use to really help my work and make me a better artist overall. Knowing when to upgrade your art business is tricky. I feel like every time I've thought about changing something or making it more luxe or more effective, it's because things have stopped working in the original way I did it. The artist I was 10 years ago is not the artist I am today. I am stricter about my note-taking and my record-keeping. I am better at painting and faster at it because I've eliminated some things from my life and added in more things that were all about productivity. The very first upgrade I should have made sooner was getting a bigger studio. I used to have a super cramped studio uh, that I rented for approximately seven years. It was this 12 by 12 room. It had a window and a sink. And when I first got into it, it was perfect for me. It was perfect for my needs. But I very quickly, after about three years, became too cramped in that space. I had a desk. I had a big work table. I had my easels. And I was making bigger and bigger artwork, more complex projects. And I started filming when I was making, and I was just running into things all the time. I can't tell you the number of paintings I've ruined because I've accidentally kicked them because they were leaning against something. (laughs) One thing I learned that prevented me from getting a bigger studio space was my budget, right? I really wanted to avoid spending more money on a bigger space, despite the fact that my rent was increasing. I had my go, I had the budget to go from my 200 square foot studio to a 500 square foot studio and the opportunity to do so a couple of times. I used to rent in this building that had lots of different kinds of workspaces, and I just kept putting off and putting off and putting off getting a bigger space. I think if I had taken action and gotten a bigger studio space sooner, I think my work would have bloomed faster. I would have been making better artwork, taking on more ambitious projects a lot quicker than I did, but I did not. Three years later, I'm currently in a bigger studio space. And my gosh, I have the freedom, I have movement. It allowed me to stream on Twitch, which was really cool and great for my business. If you are feeling that your space is too small for you, that you're working maybe on a desk in your bedroom or you have a small space that you rent and you are just feeling cramped, well, one, I would recommend cleaning it out first. (laughs) But, But if it's truly too small, Take a look around. Prices for rental spaces, for for studios, for um, any sort of creative space, they fluctuate in price. You can find something good in your area. You can maybe rent a garage from somebody. 
get creative. And if you need a bigger space, look for it. Don't keep trying to shove yourself in a shoebox, you know? <laughs> okay, the second upgrade I should have made way sooner than I did was getting a dedicated email for my art business. Even if you don't have an LLC or whatever, having a professional sounding email with your artist name in it is very important in a very free way to upgrade your art business game. <laughs> I had an email that wasn't even close to my name for years and years. Let's call it uh, fluffybunny7 at hotmail.com. <laughs> I talked to collectors with that email and I applied to shows with that email and I feel like I didn't get taken very seriously. This, this name had been something I'd come up with when I was, I think, 12. <laughs> and I was still using it as an adult and as someone who was trying to become a professional painter. It's, it's staggering the difference of how people perceived me as a different kind of person online when I changed my email to the current one, which is stephanie at stephaniescott.art. I started getting more acceptance letters, more yeses, and also more sales. To get professional kinds of money, you have to have professional kinds of face to your digital self, and that's really important. Full disclosure, I pay for my email address through my website platform. You can get very professional sounding emails from Gmail for free all over the place. Um, just get creative, try and include your name in it. But speaking of website platforms, <laughs> were you expecting a sponsorship ad here? Because that would be the ideal spot for it. Unfortunately, I'm not that fancy yet and we don't get sponsorships here on Brushwork Podcast, at least not now. <laughs> but my upgrade three is to upgrade your website. My first online gallery was with DeviantArt way back in the day. And it was perfect for the time because I was a student, like in high school, not an art student, but just a high school student. And, and I used it throughout my first year of college. I feel like I upgraded my website in a timely manner, but not into the best version of itself that I could have. I got myself a Tumblr account. I spent $20 on a fun template and I used that as my online portfolio. Still not my own website, but better than DeviantArt. <laughs> It worked for a while, but ultimately it didn't serve me well. Four years after graduating from Cornish, which is way, way later than I should have, I got myself an account on Squarespace, and that is where I host my current website. Upgrade 3.5 was getting someone to help me make my website be from just okay to, wow, this is gorgeous. <laughs> In 2021, I hired my coach, Brittany Torres, to give me a website audit. I came to her and I was like, hey, I like what I've got here on my website, but I want it to be better. And um, she kind of got this look on her face and I didn't understand what it meant because I was just getting to know her. And she was like, we could change a few things. <laughs> and then we proceeded to go through three renditions of the website. I changed the template three times. I changed my whole gallery layout. I nixed my older and irrelevant artwork and I set up an online store. I think I worked on the versions of my website for a year and a half, just going through an iteration over and over, going back to Brittany and being like, hey, can you help me make this better? Now what? What do I do next? How do I make this even more succinct and easy to be around and fun to be on a website that's full of my artwork? Hiring someone to go through your website and give you advice is one of the best advice one I've been given the opportunity to use, but also to, to do. There are plenty of web designers out there with an eye for artwork and for fine art who would be happy to help you out for an hour or so or do the work themselves. I wish I had hired someone to design my website from the get-go, but now I'm really happy with what I've got and I'm fully knowledgeable about how to make it. So you can just put a amateur website designer on my, on my resume. <laughs> She's not for hire. <laughs> The fourth upgrade I should have made way sooner was defining what my brand was. Again, in 2021, I met up with Brittany and I hired her to be a coach for me. And she's like, Stephanie, what is your brand? Do you have a font that you always use? Do you have brand colors? What kind of language are you using to speak towards your audience? And I was like, what? <laughs> I just imagine like a thousand question marks above my head. I had no idea what that was about or what that would mean. Even though I had subconsciously been making sort of a brand, it wasn't as good as having something where, okay, here's my brand info on a single page that I could hand out to someone if they were to help me. 
for this podcast before I even recorded the first couple of episodes, I made myself a brand sheet. I have my distinct colors. It's black mango as the font. I've got Montserrat as my sub font. I've got my yellow as the color, plus black, white, and a nice warm yellow color. Or more warm gray color is how I would define it. It's very, it's very vague and I love it. And then I started writing out things I wanted for my podcast. How do I want people to see the podcast? How do I want them to feel when they listen to it? What are some keywords that I'm going to use so that when you hear me say, hey, friends and foes, you know what's going to happen next. You're going to hear my voice. Having a brand sheet and really defining what your brand is, is an upgrade. I wish I had when I started Instagram. I, I wish I had it way, way earlier. And this is something that I highly recommend anyone do for their art business. The perks of having a brand and having branding and a cohesive look for your art business is that you don't have to think so hard when you are making graphics, when you're making Instagram posts, when you're talking to someone else like a client, or when you have, you know, your website look. It's, you don't have to hem and haw over colors. You just instead have to quickly pick out your design, you put in your fonts, you put in your colors, and abracadabra, you're ready to go. Another thing I love about a brand is that when someone is seeing your work online, they're going to recognize you from the colors that you're choosing. They're going to recognize, oh, there's this very specific style that this artist has made, and I know who they are because I've seen it over and over again, and I'm familiar with it, and I like it. The fifth thing I would recommend upgrading is any sort of automation you can do. Anytime I have a yearly subscription to something, I always put it on auto renewal, especially if it's something I use multiple times a week, multiple times a month. This little upgrade saves me time. And the mental load of, did I get that payment made? I love not being one, stressed about paying a bill, but two, not being interrupted during my work because I haven't resubscribed to something. I implemented this practice two years ago and it's been a great time saver and a load off my brain. In the future, I'm intending to automate emails. And in fact, right now I've started a project of making email automations a bigger part of my business. I'm automating invoices. I'm automating thank you letters. I'm automating all sorts of things that if I have to do something over and over again, might as well find an automation for it so that I don't have to remember to do you know, 10 different things. Instead, I could just be like, press a button, enter an email, abracadabra. Is that the word for this episode? Abracadabra. <laughs> the goal for all these automations is to open up as much time as possible for painting and also for relaxing. If I can automate something and not have to spend lots of brain power on it, that allows me to paint more, allows me to focus on other things that I might not be super great at, and therefore upgrade everything in my business. I waited way too long to do these. And if I had started this process, I don't know, four or five years ago, I feel like it would have been, I feel like I would be further along in my art journey. But alas, here we are. Okay. Upgrade number six, getting better tools. I used to make hand-bound Coptic sketchbooks by hand from my shop on Etsy for about five years before I bought a paper cutter. It would take me three to four hours to make a single book and I would hand cut every page, hand cut every book board, hand glue every single thing. And it, it took me, it took a lot of time to make something I was ultimately selling for 30 to $40. When I bought a guillotine cutter for my sketchbook business, it cut the time it took me to make a sketchbook into a fourth. <laughs> I can make a whole sketchbook now in under an hour because it takes me so much less time to cut and measure all of the paper and book boards that I need. If you are using something in your trade all the time and there is a better version of it out there, you should get it. <laughs> like don't wait until you think you deserve it, you know, a budget allowing, but when you get the better tools, the better materials, your work is going to improve dramatically and your time is going to become much more valuable. The time spent working will be reduced, your comfort is going to be increased, your product will be more luxe, like there's no downsides to upgrading. This is especially true of one-time purchase items like the paper cutter I just mentioned. In painting, I used to buy really cheap paintbrushes and have to replace them all the time. 
and my line work was sloppy. And, you know, some of that was practice, but some of that was the materials I was using. When I started investing in better brushes that would hold their shape for longer and have a crisper edge, my geometry in my paintings just, ah, oh, wow. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's so good. <laughs> Upgrade your tools when you can. If you can save up for it and buy a better, I don't know, anything for your business, anything for your art, you should do it. Um, and that includes things like software. I recently upgraded my subscription in Squarespace to let me do automated emails. And I honestly, I wish I'd done this forever ago. So get better tools if you have the option for it. And it's not just like stars in your eyes. Oh, I got to get it because it's a hot new thing. <laughs> get it because it'll make your work easier. Upgrade number seven is apply to bigger shows. I have a friend who will only apply to have her art in small displays at tiny shops that are usually empty. She very rarely sells any artwork because people don't come to these shops in person. They're mostly online stores. And uh, she says it's working out for her. But I, I see her and I see her work and I'm like, this is really cool stuff. Why aren't you applying to more shows that are bigger? And she's like, I don't deserve it yet. That's its own thought process and own limitation in itself. But if you have the opportunity to, upgrade your audacity. Upgrade and apply for bigger shows. Apply for group exhibitions and things that feel out of your league. When you have some tenacity and you have some audacity and you reach out for things that you're like, I probably won't get this. You might. You might, though. You can't win the lottery without buying a ticket. Is that the saying? <laughs> Opportunities only come to those who actually apply for them. You must put yourself out there. And if you feel like you are getting stuck in your growth, then you probably aren't pushing yourself enough. And a, getting a show like this is, is it's a way to push yourself. And number eight, which is my last upgrade that I recommend is upgrade your advisors. This one can be a little touchy, but I want you to consider who it is that is helping you with your artwork. Who is giving you advice that you are taking? Are you listening to people who know about art in a broad sense, or are you listening to people who are experts in their fields? If your goal is to get your art in a museum, are you going to listen to someone who has never shown their art anywhere? Or are you going to listen to someone who regularly has exhibition-level shows and beyond? When you change who you surround yourself with, you change your perspective and therefore your actions. When you change your advisors, you're going to change your outlook on how you can accomplish things. I recommend looking for teachers, looking for people who are going to give you more information on things that you are going to be foggy about, things you don't know about. And that doesn't mean just people who are teaching you technical skills with either artwork or with business work, but skills on how you think and how you are perceiving the world. I guess secret upgrade number eight or number nine is to always be taking classes, always be learning about once a season, I always try to take either a class or find an advisor or get some coaching about something for my art business. I don't typically spend more than $400 on this at any given time. Sometimes these are free, sometimes they are very expensive, but I, I'm always trying to get other people's education into my world. By doing this, you're constantly transforming your brain. You are, you are learning, you are evolving, and you're making your work even better. Lastly, when you upgrade your business, you're upgrading everything about your life. If you want to improve your situations, if you want to improve your artwork, you have to take actions and you have to put in time investments, money investments, and, and your thinking investments into your work. And it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change things for the better, hopefully. <laughs> There's always some sort of risk here in upgrades. Like, what if I try to upgrade something and it turns out not to work out? And that happens, but what if it does? And I think when you go in with the, with, the, with the thought process of, I'm going to make things better by learning from this person or learning from this automation I'm doing or whatever it is, things are gonna turn out for you. So make good choices, everybody. Upgrade your art business. And uh, if you have an upgrade you've been thinking about, will you let me know in the comments? I wanna hear about what you've been thinking of upgrading or changing or doing things for the better for your, for your artwork. I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Instagram at stephaniescott.art or the podcast is at brushworkpod. I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace out, Girl Scouts, and I'll see you later. Bye!